What's your favorite Ed Wood movie? Most people would say Planet Out from Outer Space. I would say, hmm. I like the MST when it was like teenage. Teenage werewolves? No. Hmm? That one wasn't his. I don't know. Is that a real thing? Well, probably, but no, it wasn't his. Mm. It's called, oh, I accuse my parents. Okay. That's the one I like. That's the one. I've never seen any Ed Wood movies. I've only seen the movie Ed Wood. But I figure that's... That's a great movie. Yeah. It was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. That's a real good flick. I love that one. Here's the Eve's home. Um, look at that over there. See that on the mic stand over there? That cup holder on that thing? Yeah. What's that, that for? Dad plays gigs out places, and that's where he puts his drink. <laughs> Very clever. Yeah. Clever man. Um, so... Uh, are we recording? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I always, I, I told you I'd always tell you when we started. Yeah, you did. Sorry about that. Tell us about your new uh, mustache color. How did that come about? Well, I'll tell you. It's called dye, but. I thought, you, did you do it? Because you're, I mean, like, it looks like you got, like, a, are you starting a new promotion? What, Dana White? Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, you're the second person that hassle me about this. <laughs> and I'll tell you the same thing I told him. I did the exact same thing last year. Really? If you look at my ID from when I joined up, it was actually a year, a little over a year. I had the exact same beard, same dye job, same shaved head. Huh. So nothing's changed. It's just every summer, now that I've got no hair, mm -hmm. head shaved. The stash looks a little longer than it normally is. No, it's because I used to have a full beard. Oh. Um. So now it's just a, but yeah, yeah. I want to look like a, a killer. You do? Right? Yeah, so. It's good. You well, need to look intimidating in life. Do I? In your line of work, you're dealing with criminals all day. <laughs> Those guys intimidate me. <laughs> they're already in the jail, so you know they're evil. Yeah. I, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, but getting back to the gaming part of this, <clears throat> I've been looking high and low for one of these keyboards for the XEG. Right. And the guy that was selling them has stopped. And he was wanting too much. And so now you can't get one to save your life. I've been looking everywhere. Mm. So if you see one pop up, tell me. I mean, for a decent price. The guy was wanting 60 70 bucks for one of these keyboards. Right. Which is ludicrous. But does I it get attach one. through... Um, how does it attach to the There's system? a connector on it. Oh. On the left side. I bet it's not anything you can easily hook something else up to either, is it? Mm -mm. Hey, remember when you told me once that you... Um, did a rewire job or did something on your uh, on the uh, keyboard on a four? It was on my twelve hundred XL. Yeah, yeah. How hard was that? Not hard. You got I got a circuit writing pin mm -hmm. and just retraced the connections. Mm. You think you could do that for me? Yeah. Okay. Is it on your eight hundred? The the one I've got. Remember when I brought over here to see what would work? Mm -hmm. It had uh, keys that weren't functioning. Oh yeah, yeah. Because I'm thinking about. Getting that, I think I'm gonna sell it actually, uh, since I've got the uh, XEG. But because uh, uh, I don't really need two, mm -hmm. but I don't have a power supply for it, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna get a power supply. At least I know it works. Yeah, I the 800 to me the 800 is like the ultimate machine though. It, I thought like the 800 XL was the ultimate machine. Well, power wise, probably all together it is. But I just love the look of the 800. It does have the twin cartridge slot. It's got and the, the thing you open. Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. I uh, also I was, something I mentioned. I'll mention on the podcast, but uh, Rob was talking about uh, his CD32. The uh, fact that it was an NTSC one and kind of caused him trouble. I just I've got an NTSC one, and I did a little mod to mine right after I got it. Actually, I, was on the, it was a, I had had it a week functionally, and I was on this forum because I noticed some games wouldn't play on it, and they were supposed to. And it turns out that some of the stuff wouldn't play strictly because it was an NTSC when it just wouldn't boot up. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a there's a gimmick on the CD32 that if you hold down both the mouse buttons when you boot it up, it'll boot to this like mystery menu, and you can change it to boot up in PAL. But even that doesn't do it. Hmm. But I made this. I found out that you could. There's a chip on the uh, motherboard, and I'm an idiot. Believe it or not, I remember I paid. God, what? Almost five hundred bucks for this thing. When I bought it. I pulled a J lead off the off the board, 
with my soldering iron and and soldered a switch to it and then grounded the other side of the switch and so when you when this thing is grounded it's i can't remember which is which but once at once it's grounded it's in pow and when it's not grounded it's an ntsc and that will fool the software into thinking you've got a pow cd32 you're a braver man than i am open that thing up <laughs> and a hilarious thing it's almost pointless because even though you the software thinks you've got a pal amiga you don't so when you try to run the pal stuff it just still looks jacked up because you you don't have a pal tv mm. right but it would get you past the point where a software wouldn't boot if you got something to hook it to mm -hmm. so i linked it up i thought I'd make sometime you need to bring that over and we can uh do a shoot a video of it or something like that yeah you know, just a it's got super it's got s video out and stuff on it too so yeah you know i just my thing about it is i just hate to run it because you know it's a finite those those motors are a finite thing it's yeah. just like the cd the, the that's a problem with these cd based consoles and mm -hmm. com computers is that you know you've it's not like you can hop out and get a new laser right you know, well, or get a new mechanism like PlayStation is dropped left and right. And that's the, that's why you see them everywhere. It's because those mechanisms are plastic mm -hmm. and they're in a junk. You yeah, know? yeah, they're, and that's why you still see N64s and they'll be around till the end of the, end of the end, no moving parts in those things. You know, you're right. And and collecting for CD systems blows. You don't know if the CD is going to work. You don't know if it's going to work. And I was listening with the I was listening to the uh, XEG guys. Mm -hmm. I think it was. I can't remember. I was listening to some other podcasts. And they were talking about this, and they're right. You don't know the CD is going to work. You don't know if it's scratch. You don't know if it's going to work in your machine. Right. Yeah, it might have been. Actually, it might have been uh, you and Rob talking. When, when well, that about. sounds like yeah. yeah. And uh, and I, like my Dreamcast will only run certain discs. Sometimes it doesn't run them, and it, but they'll run in other ones. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're pretty much boned. Because look at I've got the 3DO, right, with it with a, a CD in it, and I've got the th CD32, and I get the PlayStation, PlayStation Three, right, all of them. The more you play them, the more likely they are to break, and then you've got a paperweight at that point. And you got to right. start going out and hustle these parts, and they cost a ton. You know that. Yeah. Well, that's why that's why I sold all my records and got rid of my record player because I had stuff that was so valuable, I was afraid to literally put the needle on it. And yeah. See if I would scratch it. So, but anyway, it's cool that you got a CD32. Not a lot of people have that. So it was not. Any, and the funny thing is, when I got it, it was broken. Mm hmm. Ever and you, you, pay, you paid five hundred dollars for a broken well, CD32. I think I think I paid four fifty, right? So when I got it to the house, you know what? Let's talk about this on the podcast because this is a media. too related. good. Yeah, it's too good for the. We got to keep this as strictly off-topic banter on the pre-show. What are you doing this weekend? I'm playing in the Wiz. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Trombone. Playing, yeah, trombone. Um, we're gonna we're gonna ease on down the road, as they say. It's funny because the Wizard of Oz is playing in Huntington at the same time. It's funny they're playing Wizard of Oz. That my kid went to these free movies and you know for kids in mm -hmm. raw school. And this will come in a week. It's the Wizard of Oz. Wow! And Tree was the, we were talking. She would send Luke to see this or take. She, today they went and saw the SpongeBob movie. Mm -hmm. By the way, this is off topic, so I can rant. <laughs> so it's a free movie down there at the Frank's Theater, right? And for you European folks, you can do the math. I don't know what does it cost in pounds or euros. So a free movie costs how much? Zero dollars, right? So they took him down for the free kids movie, SpongeBob the movie. Now, Tree didn't want to see this, and Luke doesn't care. He's a kid. So they went and saw this flick. Well, of course, they wanted to get some popcorn, soda pop, and a, the kid pack. 19 bucks yeah. this free movie cost me. Mm -hmm. 19 bucks for a free movie. I was appalled at this price. The people that sell movie concessions should be taken out and beaten. I don't mean the actual people that sell it. I mean the people that arrange these prices. The highway robbery. That's all when they say, hey, don't take in outside food. Screw you guys. I'm paying 10 bucks per ticket to get in this flick, and you want me to pay five times that for your popcorn? Right. Well, you've got to look at it, I guess, from their perspective. Nobody goes to the movies anymore compared to what they used to. Have you and seen so. what movies are making? Someone's going. Yeah. They're making billions of dollars. That's true. They're making more than any movies ever made. I guess I'm projecting my own self of never going to the movies. I don't blame you. Yeah. <laughs> what movies came out where you're like, boy, I got to go see that? Nothing. You know, yeah, I mean. Nothing. Um, it's, it's ridiculous. And every time I go, I have a horrible time. There's loud people. There's people on their phones. But, like you said, the food's crazy. Yeah, but getting back to the original Sorry, point is, uh, they're playing The Wizard of Oz at this thing next week. We're debating, is a six-year-old 
capable of setting through this, number one. Number two, not being scared to death over it. And number three, would he even like it? Mm -hmm. And I think we decided he probably wouldn't yet. I remember seeing Wizard of Oz when I was a little kid, and it really freaked me it's out. It's scary. It really you know? is. And so, and it can be boring if you're not into it. Mm -hmm. So, might skip that one. Yeah. You might want to take them to the Wiz, see the more soulful retelling. How's your, are, are you guys singing on stage? Are they singing this? It's thing? a musical. Yeah, uh, I mean. Who, who's, who are they bringing in? Is this an outside outfit? No, this is, this is all, it's all Charleston area people. Really? Yeah, all African American cast. All African American, so it's all, it's going to be like the the uh, the TV. Yeah, it's like well the you know the movie was based on the the musical, but none of the dialogue is the same. They changed all the dialogue for the movie, and and this dialogue is much better. <laughs> the movie is a little bit hard to follow in some places. It's it's I don't know how long it's been since. Which would say it's not very good. It's not it's not a great movie. Yeah. Michael Jackson is pretty much the only reason why you want to stick around and watch. Well, Diana place. Ross. Is She's eighty four years old and playing Dorothy. <laughs> it's. She wasn't eighty four, no. but she 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 does How not dare look you. young. But anyway, that's what I'm doing. That'll this be weekend. fun. Have you got to sit in on the dress rehearsal? Yeah, I, you know we rehearsed with the cast last week. We'll never get to see the show because we're in the pit. But uh, <laughs> but that's, that's, that's a bummer. Isn't it? Yeah, that's the way it goes when you play in these things. Um, but yeah, I didn't get to go to the rehearsals this week because I was at the the technology conference. Oh. That sounds so much cooler than it actually was at the wager. Well, yeah, there. I mean, there is stuff going on with technology, but it's all about getting the the rest of the teachers that aren't technical to buy in, and it's hard to do that. None of them want when to. you've got a teacher that's been teaching for forty years and they've done things the same way. Are there any teachers at the school that still use the old projector? You mean like a visualizer with a with a clear screen? No, I mean the uh, a projector, reel to reel projector. Oh no, gosh no. When I was in school, they used those. Well, that was that was you know forty seven years ago. I mean, you were in school. In Did the you look 70s. at this beard? You were in school. And you're in gonna badmouth me. It's it's. I will pound you in the ground like a nail, boat. <laughs> it's crazy that you were in school, like by the time that I entered kindergarten, you were driving. Really? Yeah. When did you graduate? Uh, ninety nine. Where's that? Like Ten years. Yeah. Well, go to hell, boat. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, you were in second grade at least when I was driving. Well, when I, didn't I was drive when I was fifteen. You didn't. No. What about your learners? Sixteen. Oh, okay. I was ready to go, though. Yeah. What was your first car? I, let me see here. Uh, what was that thing? It was this green hatchback. And everywhere I go, yo, I get laughed at. Remember that rap from last week? Yeah, that was no good. This was a Chevy Citation, I think, sort of had, or something like, something along those lines. Or a Toyota hatchback, something like that. It was some old, you know. My dad wrecked the first car I had. Mm. It was because it was set, technically we were both using the car. He hit a tow truck. Oh. Which is odd. Well, I, I never understood exactly what happened there. <laughs> but it's convenient. They just picked him up and left. It's true. Yeah. As long as the tow truck wasn't damaged too much. No. You're not going hurt a tow truck. That's true. Did you, ever, did you ever drive the Fairmont or was that Brent's car only? The Fairmont? Mm -hmm. Is that that red car? Yeah. It was a white. I don't remember that one. Brent's first car was a freaking B a classic antique BMW. Really? What happened Cherry red. He hated his car. He hated it. Because it had uh, this weird ignition plug thing that he didn't like. And but, Was it a diesel? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, but it was so good looking, this mm -hmm. car. I was like, man, I wanted it so bad. But uh, he was very fortunate. Mm, yeah. No, not so much me. My first car was a 88 Plymouth Voyager minivan. Nice. It was great. You, you put about a gallon of oil in it for each gallon of gas that you went through. So you missed out on the good vans. The vans that you could put portraits and crap on the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always I wanted one of those, one of those so those. bad. You remember that song? Yeah. We made love in my, my Chevy, Chevy van. van. And that's all right with me. <laughs> I love that song. I think the song is actually called the Chevy van yeah. song. <laughs> yeah. That's a good tune. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, I always wanted one of those cool vans and you could have like the bed and couch and crap in the mm -hmm. back and a mini bar or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Now those days are over. You know what's got one of those. No. Now the vans are just boring. Mm -hmm. There's no cool portraits on the side. No. It's a shame. What's yeah. your dream vehicle? I always wanted to drive the original Batmobile from the old car, the old uh, 60s or 70s, you know, Adam West. Uh, I like that an awful lot. My dream vehicle, though, if I could pick a car right now, like the, to have, and, and within the realm of realism, like I'm, it's not going to be like a you know Lotus, you know, a Spree Turbo. Or, I would like to have a big 
nineteen early nineteen seventies big dog Thunderbird. Oh, okay. With the big, I want one of those cars that have a full size couch as the front seat. <laughs> right, right, right. And my buddy Big Head had one of these, mm-hmm. and we I remember popping hood on this thing, and the engine was the size you could put another car in the <laughs> engine. It was massive. We called this thing the boat because whenever we drove down the 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 highway people just got the hell out of the way they didn't want a part of this car no one wanted to be a part of this car because they would it would kill you it's like a tank it was like a boat of car it was a boat of car absolutely and so if i had something like i want to pimp it up you know but something like that i like to have a spacey car you know by room those cars you i mean you could lay down in the back floor right the trunk was huge you know you could put a couple bodies in there did you ever see that show forever night it was a vampire show. It used to be on late night on USA Network. It was syndicated. It was about this vampire who, on, during the day, was a, was a detective. Mm-hmm. Right? Ever heard no? Mm-hmm. Nothing. It was a good show. But I remember, I don't remember the name of the car I used to drive, but it was this car. And I always asked, why do you drive this weird car? It was it, The car had the most trunk space available of any car. Because he would sleep in the trunk sometimes, oh, but he couldn't get back to his apartment yeah, because he's yeah. a vampire. So if you're a vampire, that's that's the way you want to go. Large trunk. Or if you're just going to sadistic kidnapper. True. And you want to kidnap in mass. <laughs> you know, you're a kidnapper, but you're in a hurry. Right. You know, like a you know, like a buffet. Now, what about the Smokey and the Bandit car? Wasn't that a Thunderbird? No, that was a yeah, Firebird. Firebird. I get those confused. Yeah. I'm no car guy. I'm not going to mm-hmm. lie. My dream car is a Carmen Ghia. Have you ever seen one of those? My dad used to own one. Really? Yeah, absolutely. I've always liked... I. It, you know that tran- funky. You know that transmission shop in front of the middle school. Yeah, there was one that sat there for years and years and years, and I used to go and sit in it. Just like me and Chad used to go and sit in it. The funny thing, the one Dad had was a semi-automatic. Very. How does that one. work? You shift. I think it's you shift, but there's no clutch. Okay. I believe I, I couldn't drive an, a, a stick, mm-hmm. but I could maybe drive that. Right. Uh, but uh, Dad had one for a while. I'm not sure it ever worked. Mm. I think he bought it for me and never fixed it. And my neighbor had once where he got the idea. Was, really? Yeah, Dad was a big fan of the old car McGee. Well, that's cool. Yeah, they're neat little cars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd like to have one, and maybe one day they're not too expensive. You can get one that's fully restored for about ten grand. Yeah. So I always like the old, and this is back before Back to the Future was that I was always a big fan of the DeLorean. Those are such a cool looking car. Mm-hmm. They fit that age. You know, computers sort of look like that. Big metal. Yeah, I love you know, this. S- you know, that, that sanded steel. You know, the, the Lotus Esprit kind of has that same sort of cut look to it, too. The uh, I like the door, the gull wing mm-hmm. doors. Oh, I love Of course, those are bad times when you're in a close parking <laughs> spot. Right? I like the ones that kind of, well, they would fold twice. Have you, you ever know? been into, have you ever been in one before? I've not been in one, but I've been around one. In fact, we just saw one at the supermarket a couple weeks ago, and they were real nice, letting people come and take pictures. With My them. roommate from college picked me up in one. His his buddy owned one when really? we went up to visit him. And it's crazy because we were driving down the road, and we opened the doors, and you're sitting like, you know, it seemed like six inches off the ground. Yeah. You're sitting so low to the ground. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. 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 You know, another car I like to have is, remember, you ever seen those old cars you used to make that would, they were also boats? That was a true boat Oh, car. right, right. Um the aqua car yeah those yeah. would be fun to have they still exist today with the duck tours you know i saw a guy that uh the other day he drove his car in off a boat ramp and just <laughs> right at, right at the water i guess i don't know if he's trying to kill himself or, oh so and i thought not, to myself if he had an thing. aqua car he'd be all right i mean think about that there are these boat ramps everywhere mm-hmm. i'm surprised more people don't do that just drive their boat well i think that it's probably not the most fuel efficient vehicle no i mean but, I mean, people were idiots though oh sure i'm just figuring oh yeah not paying attention. <laughs> you know? Following the GPS right into the you lake. Know? <laughs> you know, but I mean, I like that'd be cool. An aqua car to drive around would be kind of fun. I'd like to have a flying car. I mean, if they're we're working back, on them. We're blue sky. Google, man. Oh, you know. You know, there's there's uh, lots of cars, even now, they'll drive themselves on the highway. You know, they can see the lines. Oh, yeah, yeah. The robot cars. Yeah. That's going to be a thing, you know. So. It's a thing. Would you trust a car to drive you around? Oh, sure. Yeah, me too, because people can't drive for... Yeah, you know, so. I trust, I, you know... I wish everyone else had a robot car, and I'd feel a lot safer. Plus, I'd love to be able to just do whatever I want. Bring my Amiga in the car with me, fire it up. It'd be like Rally X everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, you buy any games this week? Uh, I did. I bought WWE 2K16. I wow, did. that's a modern game. Yeah, I bought a modern game on Steam this week. I got a, I got a super good deal on it. As you know, obviously I'm a wrestling fan, and uh, <laughs> I want to say that we talked about this last week. I think I just had gotten it, okay, but I've already, so. me and Luke have been playing it quite mm-hmm. a bit. 
and uh, we both stink at it, but it, that that's it's pretty fun. Uh, we've played it we've played it uh, quite a bit this week. It has replaced Pokemon as the number one game that I get to play. Uh, but uh, mostly this week, I sat around playing uh, Guyana Sisters and um, pinball. Mm. I played. <laughs> I was at work and had a lunch break to kill and loaded up pinball uh, dreams on the computer and sat back and still plays good. Oh, know? yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a few go-to games that I've developed a liking to uh, since we've reviewed them. And, of course, I always like pinball dreams, but I, I, well, occasionally I'll play Cannon Fodder is one I go back to. And uh, that uh, uh, Moonstone. That's a fun game. Yeah. I, yeah. I stink. I've never improved, but I, I'm trying to when kill we do our guys. When we do our top 10, I think Moonstone's going to end up in there. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, we'll we'll revisit a lot of these gems. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so, yeah, I've, there's been quite a few games I've found that I've, I go back. And Lemmings is another one. I forgot how much I enjoyed that. And I went back and played it a little bit in the past couple, in the past week. So, yeah, but I haven't bought anything. I've got my eye on some stuff, but summer's coming or summer's here and I've got vacation coming. So, I'm yeah. I'm gonna pay you. What about you? Did you get anything this week? No, I've I've been reading up a lot on the Archimedes though. Trying to. I heard you mention that during your uh, thing with Rob. I I thought you just pulled that out of your hind, frankly. But you're actually you're gonna buy you an Archimedes. It's they're tough to find. By the way, you need to buy you. A, I heard you say I'm gonna emulate these. Nah. <laughs> you gotta buy one of these European computers. Yeah, I need to. I want Archimedes would be a fine choice just because of the crazy name. Right, the Acorn Archimedes, and I went on. Um, one of the guys from the retro video game, I think it's retro video game .co .uk, yeah. one of these British forums, uh, said, Hey, you should post your stuff on there. So I posted, you know, about the podcast. But I started looking around, that's a great forum, and they've got all kinds of stuff on the acorn. Really? So, uh, been reading up on that. And, uh, is the Archimedes sort of like the uh, uh, acorn equivalent for the Amiga and the ST? Yeah, 16 bit, yeah, yeah and it, but it uses the risk architecture, it actually, uh, really, yeah. So yeah, it was the first computer to sort use of a hot system. dog. Then. Yeah, yeah. It would be a lot faster than these processor wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah. had the custom chips to graph. It's stuff. got yeah, it's got a lot of custom <laughs> chips in it, but it didn't get a lot of game support. How did um, it stack up against the Amiga and the ST? I, I watched some videos of games, and they look they look pretty similar. I don't think that the programmers really unlocked a lot of the potential that was there, just because the market was so small. That seems to be the issue with the risk processor. Mm -hmm. it, it, those things you always hear. I, I remember for decades how great these were, and and really, I never remember. I don't remember everything anything sliding out that was that awesome that was i mean from a consumer standpoint mm -hmm. i don't i can't what what game what machines use those um i want to say that one of the playstations run on or uh, uh some kind of wasn't wasn't it didn't phone processors used to be risk processors at some point like the early smartphones i don't, I don't or something? know you might be right i don't know it seems I, like i might have was that what was in the gp2x well that sounds like it should have been if it wasn't I should, I've got a GP2. I should, I should go home and look. Yeah. Well, the two B continued on the right. risk processing. I, but yeah, that see that's that's intriguing. Yeah, the yeah. game support was low though. Eh? Yeah, it was. I mostly... mean, we, we, a lot of the stuff we've reviewed has uh, Archimedes supports. They had to have some stuff. Yeah, out. yeah. I think that a lot of it was you know they got a lot of ports from the ST and the Amiga. Um, Dreamcatch actually reviewed an Archimedes game that was ported to the Amiga though. Top Banana. I didn't catch that. How, yeah. What did he say? Uh, he just gave the whole, it's another, you know, it's a classic green catcher, you know. Uh, he talks everything you want to know about it. So, um, did you read his article on on the, the piracy defeat? <laughs> yeah, that was great. I, I'll, to me, I think it's cool. Actually, we're going to talk about this on the show. I've got it in the notes. Oh, so we'll, sorry. We'll, we'll table it for now. I loved, I loved, we had a couple this week that amused me. Yeah. Um, but we do need to pick some games for next week. Um, uh, so are we checking up? Is this the one where it's gonna get just gonna open it up? Is that the deal on that? Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna open this up for everybody. So yeah, uh, because we got all the three votes last week, uh, we're gonna open this up to our whole audience and let them let them have a say in the in the polling. So uh, we got one nomination already: Jaguar or Jaguar. XJ220. I actually played that. So that, that'll be one. Anything else you're thinking about? Um, Three Stooges. Yeah. I saw the Three Stooges movie the other night. In fact, I almost wore my Three Stooges tie tonight, but it's too hot. Uh, but uh, I'm Three Stooging it right now. So I would love to go back. And by the way, FYI, 
The plot from the movie is directly taken from the game. Oh, interesting. I mean, it is the, directly the taken from it. Yeah. Uh, and I, I really like the... Uh, the movie was pretty good. I love the Three Stooges. I know we just did Cinema Wear, but I haven't done that one yet. And I That's it, fine. So. Yeah, I got no problem with that. What about you? What do you got in your head? Oh, I don't know. I was thinking... I, I, the only thing I, I, I gotta be honest with you, I, I thought of some things and they've left me. Um, How about a shooter? How about Super Stardust? Okay. Although I'm probably screwing myself because I think that's gonna get outvoted. <laughs> outvoted, <laughs> outvoted three Stooges. Um, that's a card oh, game, a cinema warrior game, a shooting game. Let me think here. Horse racing simulator? I don't have one. Do you, is there one? I don't know. <laughs> well, why did you suggest it then? <laughs> I figured there should be. There isn't. Let me ponder this for a moment here, Boat. Um, it's too bad we just played Aqua Games. That would be... <laughs> I love that game. Yeah. Hey, Summer Games. They're almost here. Yeah. They're almost upon us. That's perfect. Summer Games. So... Our four nominations for this week will be Jaguar, XJ220, Three Stooges, Super Stardust, and Summer Games. I would be happy with any of those. Although I'd say Jaguar, I thought was pretty good. But yeah, was... there are some that say it's better than the Lotus series. I don't Ooh, know about that. Hmm, hmm. But um, but yeah. So please vote. The uh, I'll send out the link uh, on the blog, and we'll we'll pick one. Yeah. Uh, I think that'll about do it for the pre-show. Let's fire the we sucker pretty, up. We went pretty long this week. Well, we went about normal. Twenty. You know, whenever minutes. you play the theme, we just sit here looking like dopes. So what should we, we do? I don't know. Oh, you know what we should do? We should be off screen. And just kind of rumble it in. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Okay.